Hi, I'm Steve Clemens. I direct the foreign policy programs at the New America Foundation, and I write the political blog, The Washington Note. I'm here with General Anthony Zinni, who's just spoken at the New America Foundation, uh, in part about his new book, Leading the Charge, Leadership Lessons from the Battlefield to the Boardroom. Uh, General Zinni, thanks for very much for taking a few minutes with us. Thanks, I, Steve. I, I thought I would ask, you know, I, I as I mentioned before, I, I listened to you on the Diane Reem show, and I was so taken with this obvious um, struggle uh, at, that, that you you went through and you felt the nation went through over the Iraq war, sorting out what its interests are and how to organize itself in different ways. And um, I titled uh, the, the event we did, Sorting Out America's Honor Problem, and you suggested it's really sorting out our credibility problem. And I, and, I, and I think you've implied that we have a tremendous credibility problem globally today. And I'd love mm -hmm. to just get a few minutes from you on what you think right. we need to do to get out of this hole. Well, I, I think the president's off. Uh, president Obama's off to a good start. He's he's sort of addressed uh, uh, the world, particularly the Islam, uh, Muslims and and others, and he's articulated a change in in the way we're going to approach uh, protecting our interests in the world. More emphasis on on the non-military side, uh, and the question becomes the next steps. I, I, I think he's raised expectations. I think uh, the message has gone out, and people accept it for what it is, but they want to see actions. My suggestion is that next is, is the national security strategy is a vehicle to direct the restructuring of government, the reorientation, which I think is going to be necessary, because that's, a, that's the vehicle, vehicle legally that does that or is supposed to do that. And then from there, I think there has to be a serious approach as to how we organize and structure ourselves, how we change some cultures, how we build and provide the resources for the other elements so that we have an even uh, uh, approach in terms of the hard power of the military and the soft power of diplomacy and development and the other organizations in government. Now you've said that under the Goldwater Nichols Act, which is a law, a national security decision making law, that the president is required to issue within 150 days of his administration the release of a national security strategy. Not all administrations do that. The no. Obama administration has not done it. Do you think they're aware they haven't done this and that, they, that, that this well, is important? I mean, unfortunately, I think that it's there's not been focus on this not just in this administration but in others it, and it's supposed to accompany the budget because mm. it's supposed to provide the logic for the budget and the context for the decisions that the congress has to make on on the allocation of resources i think it's critically important and we've seen when presidents get around to it it really shapes their and defines their administration we saw in the bush administration they did it after 911 and a small piece of that on preemption became the Bush Doctrine. And we saw in the Clinton era, uh, engagement became the theme. And that was part of the national security strategy when it was finally issued. You know, and, and so I do think it sets a theme. But more importantly, it's supposed to be the means by which then the State Department, Department of Defense, and other agencies prepare their strategies, their operational plans. And it's supposed to have this cascading effect down in, in driving you know, the, the context of what we do. You've been involved with just about every smart panel you know, commission uh, project uh, in town, looking at smart power and what it means. And I was surprised and interested in your comments today that you felt that loading up the State Department with more personnel and budget, loading up AID more, doesn't solve the problem. That in, in contrast to the military, which thinks through um, various scenarios that plans for them on a regular basis that goes in and you know what you're going to do. There's this sort of fuzzy uh, and somewhat soft logic often uh, connected to, to, to the other things. And you've suggested that we just disband that, do something in the military. I'd love to hear a little bit more about what yeah, you because this is a provocative idea. Well, I, I, I think that, uh, that, that there's a major cultural change that would have to happen. For example, we do a lot of planning in the military. We think of things in terms of strategic, operational, and tactical terms, and it's very structured in what we do. Uh, we obviously are very structured in how we make strategic decisions and, and military policy in the, in the way we operationalize that and the way we perform on the ground tactically. And I don't see a structure on the other side coming about to match that. I think a lot of it's countercultural. I think just more people and more resources just compound the problem. In order to get a match, you need a framework that already has those component parts. So my, my suggestion is we create a military command, a unified command, maybe out of uh, civil affairs, but obviously make it much more robust. And it's not meant for the military to take on these non-military tasks of economic, political, social mm -hmm. reconstruction or construction, but it's meant to be that 
existing framework that, that has a process that can plan, that can team and organize, that can structure you and deploy you uh, for the right situations. And, and, and just put that requirement on the military to bring it together. Now, we see sort of many versions of that, like with African Command and Southern Command, where they've integrated their staffs more. But I'm talking about something much more robust that would not only be a, a large staff with, with components, much like our staffs have now of, of uh, services, Army, Navy, Air Force, Marine Corps, Special Operations, but it would have State Department component, other components. But it would relieve the other organizations of, of government to try to create something that's alien to them. Uh, something that involves planning, organizing, deploying, administering. Let's just let the military do that, be the, uh, the uh, government agency responsible for that. Let me just finish up with two quick last points. One is you're an envoy for Israel and Palestine. Uh, George Mitchell is expected in late September, early October to sort of lay out what the administration's direction on Israel-Palestine is. You've got Richard Holbrook, you've got other envoys in the process. I'd love to hear what you think about envoys and, 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 and that approach to problem solving in the world. And then finally, it, in a friendly way, uh, it, but maybe it happened in an unfriendly way, what do you think Barack Obama isn't doing yet that he needs to do to solve America's credibility problem? Well, I mean, first of all, I got to say with all, you know, appreciation for the what's on his plate. <laughs> I mean, the economic problems, the two wars, taking on health care, I mean, he has loaded it up. And, and so it's hard to criticize him for not getting to the sixth and seventh issue that you feel passionate about. Uh, and, 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 and I think there's the issue of foreign policy and national security policy, the team of rivals concept, I think the jury's still out. Does that mm -hmm. really work? Are many voices, are they really together? What's holding them together? Uh, the president has been forced to be engaged in those other things I mentioned. I think this creation of the envoys is an interesting organizational construct, but it presents a lot of problems. It's non-confirmable. It's overlaid as an extraordinary uh, structure on top of the existing structure. What does it mean? Who's in charge? Uh, there may be even constitutional issues. Envoys normally have short-term temporary responsibility. When you create czars and envoys, it's saying that the structure can't handle it. First question you have to ask, shouldn't you change the structure to handle it? If it's a short-term temporary thing, sure, it works. I mean, that, that makes sense. But if it's a long-term requirement, it's going to be a robust staff, it's going to have authority over the existing constitutionally structured uh, infrastructure, then I think you've got some issues. And it's going to cause more confusion, I think, in the end, than it is going to be productive. In terms of George Mitchell and the, and the process out there, I don't think the envoy system is going to work. I think you need a, a, a major commitment on the ground, a political and economic a, 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 a security and a monitoring structure. They need to work from the bottom up, detailed implementation plans over a long period of time. It's not going to be short term. You're not going to resolve this with summits or, or short term uh, sessions in any way. It's not going to be a top down solution and it's not going to be all settled in one bite. It's too complex for that. Well, General Zinni, I'm so glad your book is doing so well. And thank, thank you for being here, and uh, thanks very much for continuing to be part of these, these big questions. Thanks, thanks a lot. Thank Appreciate you. It.